Alright, so now this hive is, uh, this mating nuke is now queenless. So I'm going to take that box and I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to move it right on top of this hive. And I'm going to separate it, separate them with a piece of newspaper. And then I'm going to completely block the, the new hive off so that they can't, the only way to get out of the hive, the top, say, say this is the new hive, say this box is, is where the new box is going to go, which is those guys. Um, the piece of newspaper will be right here. This will be completely blocked so they can't get out of this hive unless they go down. And so what will happen is they'll gradually chew through this newspaper and over two or three days as they slowly you know break through the newspaper their scent will mingle with the scent of this other colony which is a foreign colony completely different colony different queen different smell different everything it'll, they'll take them it'll, they'll just get a, a, a small whiff of the, each other and then by the time they've opened up the the hole in the newspaper so that they can all just sort of come through freely their their scent will have mixed together so that they'll create almost like one new scent and they'll all know each other and they won't be a big fight to the death type of thing because that's what happens um the other day i did this let's see if i can here it is over here huh i accidentally stupidly put in a frame of bees can you see these these are all dead bees um, I put in a frame of bees from another hive into this hive and they all fought to, and they, they just killed all the new bees like, or most of them anyway, quite a few of them and that's just a pretty bad stupid thing to do and I did it and uh, so that's why we put the newspaper in just so that they get some time to get to know each other because if you just toss them in all together they'll just, they're just going to fight and kill each other so just taking the top off the hive getting rid of this They've got a, a jar feeder. Take this rim off. So I go shoosh. Give them a little spray. It's like smoke. Not quite. So I will take a piece of newspaper. The crossword section. And I will fit it right over the hive. This deep. So this is right over the bees. There's all those bees living down there having a good time. And I'm going to pick these, this hive up and plonk it right down, right on top of this. Put it on this and then slide it so it's in perfect position. There we go. Then What we got going on now, you can see here, there's the newspaper between the two deeps. This deep is completely sealed in. The bees that are living in here cannot get out. So it's completely right on top of the other hive. The other hive box anyway, it's a small hive. So in order for this, these bees to get out, they need to chew through this newspaper. And over the two or three days that it takes them to chew out through that newspaper, It'll, it'll open up the, the hole like I explained and the bees in this hive will get used to the bees in this hive, the smell of them, so that when they do come down they won't fight each other to the death like these bees over here did accidentally a couple days ago. I put in some bees from another hive into that, from that hive and they killed them all. So, so that's it. I, so I just took their queen away. They're queenless. Um, and they're completely stuck inside this box. It's gonna get hot. I know that. Now, normally I would put a ventilated rim on top of this so that they at least got some ventilation. And I might be able to do that. I'll try to do that later on. Right now they're fine. I know they're gonna, they're, they're, there's no sun on them right now, so they'll be fine until tomorrow. Uh, they're not gonna suffocate that quickly. And uh, that's it. They'll start chewing through this and by, by tomorrow morning they, they should actually start chewing through that paper. And uh, and hopefully, in three days, it'll be one big hive with, with twice as many bees in it. And right over here, by the way, <laughs> all these bees that are sort of hovering about, they're the bees that uh, were coming back to this hive. This is, I just stole their queen and moved them over here. 
to combine it with this hive. And there's a lot of, actually I should probably move this one to that, that location. But what I can do is just slide this over a bit so that it's closer to where their location was. And maybe they'll, they'll try to just enter this hive. That's sort of what happens when bees are homeless and they're drifting. They'll just drift into another colony and the other colony will accept them if they're bringing in you know pollen or nectar or something that they can use right if they're not there to because bees that aren't bringing in pollen and nectar they're up to something they're trying to steal from you usually but if you're bringing stuff they go hey well that's cool you're helping us so come on in so um yeah maybe i'll slide this over more so these stragglers these returning foragers will maybe come back into this hive they'll probably go into that hive too okay so i shifted this hive down the pallet to the sort of closer to where the other hive used to be, the other mating nuke used to be. And you can see already these these bees, these are all these are all bees probably from this hive that used to be right here. And they're just sort of wandering about going, oh, where's the house? Where's the door? Right? Whereas this hive down here, the only door they have is this little hole right here. I've got the mm -hmm. bottom entrance blocked up. So this is really good. If these bees do eventually say, look, we want to come inside. They're going to go down to that little hole. That's the only hole they can get into. And, um, and that'll allow the, the bees that are, in there, that are inside there to defend it well if they need to. And they'll just let the ones in that they feel comfortable letting in. So it shouldn't be like a big melee. There shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a lot of fighting. And hopefully all these stragglers are just going to find their way home. The funny thing is that they'll see this newspaper as a wall. So they'll walk down here, hit that wall, and just back off and go, huh, that's the end of it, right? But if I, so if I strip this off, they'll just be able to walk right down and maybe they'll find that entrance. But if I peel this off, I could end, accidentally rip the, uh, the paper inside and the bees could, could be combining too early. Let's see if I can do it anyway. Okay, that's, that's the best I could do because look, yeah. you can see right here it actually started to tear inside. And that's, it, I don't think it went all the way inside, but it easily could. So I'm just going to leave it like that. These stragglers will come down here, go, and they'll eventually find their way down here and, and ask to see if they can get inside, hopefully. And hopefully like, when I come back here tomorrow, this won't be full of dead bees all over the bottom board. And then in three or four days, all those bees will be mixed together and it'll be one big happy family. But boy, they're, you can see they're really straggling. They're looking for a place to live. Anyway, hopefully I didn't screw it up. Well, it's time to check out this hive. This is the one. <clears throat> oh, look at that, they're, they're scenting a bit there. It's getting hot in there. So you can see here the um, this fuzzy stuff. That's the uh, newspaper that they've chewed out. And let me just... See if I can get to show you that. There we go. So that's chewed up newspaper. So that means they've they've chewed through the newspaper that was separating the two colonies. This was the queenless colony. This was the the queened one or queen right colony. Now they're living together in harmony. Let's take a look. See if that's true. So here we have the queenless mating nuke on top and you can see right over here down there I don't know if you can see it um, but uh, they've they've chewed through the newspaper so <clears throat> that's good enough for me I think I'm just gonna open it all up completely and here you can see I, I, I moved this the frames aside and you can see they've totally torn it down into that newspaper through that newspaper and the bees are mingling so no dead bees anywhere if, they, if these bees uh, weren't getting along they would just uh, to be dead bees all over the place. So now I'm going to just try to reduce them down to a single deep or whatever. We'll see what I got here. It's impressive though. Um, you can see how quickly they, they drew this comb, this, this funky comb down there. They do that in like two days. So the, there's definitely a honey flow on the go here. Uh, I had those that I had too much space between those frames and they just gunked it up with comb, which is what they do. Just look at that comb right there on the side of this uh, brood frame. See if I can peel it off. There it is. Yeah, yeah it's just hanging there. Ugh. Now there's nothing going, nothing in this. But see, that's it. They're just that's just free hanging comb that they they built because uh, 
I had the frames too far, far apart and they just filled in the space. Queen, who has been laying eggs. Looking good. Okay, so now we're going to um, get rid of now we're going to get rid of this box on top of the hive here, the combined hive. And I have like five hive tools around, including two J-hook hive tools, and I've misplaced all of them except for this one. I'm constantly dropping my stuff in the grass and all that jazz. This is the extra comb they built because I had the frames too far apart, or one of the frames too spaced apart. It's just a nice, they did that in less than a day, so I mean, there definitely makes me think that um, there's a flow on the go, lots of nectar coming in. Anywho. What we have here is the uh, skateboard. So I had the bees in this deep on those four frames. And I just put the skateboard on top of it, underneath it, and so the bees went down through the little little hole. And then they came out the bottom and they can't find the way find the way back up and so they can't escape. And they have to go live in the hive with the rest of the bees, which is what I did. And there they are. <clears throat> and we'll just take a quick peek. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to bother. They're, they're in there. They're happy. Trust me, it worked. So there we go. So I originally had two small hives, or two deeps, that I was using as basically mating nukes, and the queens mated well, and then the queen from the other mating nuke was transferred to another hive. So I was left over with, I was left with six or seven frames, deep frames, from that original hive. It had brood on it and everything, so I took all the brood frames and I stuck them down in the bottom of this one. Well, not right away, but first I did the, the combine, I had the newspaper combine. And then once they were combined, I took the brood and everything that was good in those frames, stuck them down in that bottom with the rest of those bees down there. And, uh, and then I took the, uh, these leftover frames that were full of bees, but no, no brood or anything special, and I put them on top of the hive with the escape board to separate the bees from the frames. I could have just shaken them off, but I didn't have time for it, so this is what I did. And then I came back a couple days later and all the bees are gone because they went through the escape board and got trapped in the hive. And now we, I've got one little hive with a freshly mated queen and everything's great. So um, my plan with this queen is to actually replace the queen that's living in old number seven over here. This colony has been slow all year, all year long, basically. Um, I might get a frame, of, I might get a, a medium of honey out of them, but probably not. It doesn't, it's really, this just this doesn't, it's just not, like, not a lot going on there. And they've just been a little bit too slow. And in my experience, my limited experience, I've only been at this since 2010, um, when they start to slow down, um, when they start off the year slow, and this is what this, co this colony has, it's been slow all year, um, they don't produce anything, and the queen can suddenly just fail over the winter time, and when the queen fails over the winter time, then your whole colony dies, because there's not much you can do in the winter time. This queen is going to get replaced before the winter. And uh, there you go, beekeeping. Um, how I'm going to replace her, I don't know yet. I'm, I might, i got to go in here and find the queen, get, and, you know, do something with her, either give her to somebody, or dispatcher, which is the f fancy word for squishing her. Or I might take this hive, this whole hive, because basically it's a it's a it's a colony of, of honeybees. Uh, remove the queen, and then take that box and put it underneath, and completely block it off from the hive, the colony that's right here, old number seven, and just do a newspaper combine. And then once they combine, naturally combine, that queen will naturally go up as well and they'll be happy. But oh, that might not work though because because uh, in that time that they're combining the, the, the half of the colony that is queenless might actually 
produce a queen cell. So I'm that might probably, okay, I won't do that. But I could, I'm not going to do this either, but I could do this too. I could also put that, that, that deep with the new queen and all that stuff and all that brood, put it on the bottom, do the newspaper combined, but put a queen excluder between the two of them. And so what happens is they eventually, they will combine, but they will have two queens, and the queens will be separated by the queen, queen excluder. And that can happen too. I've done that, and believe it or not, that works. That can work anyway. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with that, but I've seen it happen. I've done it. Uh, you can have two queens in one hive as long as they're, the bees slowly mix like this through a newspaper combine, and as long as they're separated by a queen excluder. And they'll still live just like any other colony, except you have two queens. Um, the only difference with that though, the only funky thing with that is um, with two queens, sometimes what happens is the queen on the bottom or the top um, will just end up not being well tended to because the, the, all the foragers will usually come back to either the top or the bottom and whichever entrance these the bees happen to be using, that's the queen that gets favored and that's the brood nest that gets built up and all that stuff. So the queen on the bottom could be neglected and it doesn't work out as well, right? Or the top, whichever it happens to be. And I, but I don't know, I've only done this twice, and I've noticed this twice. I'm not an expert on that at all, but it can be done. But basically, I think what I'll do is just remove this queen and then introduce the other queen, uh, just the way I normally would with a mated queen. In the meantime, I'm going to take these frames, these four frames. Now, I could use these frames. Let me just see what I got here. See, this is this is worker brood or worker comb. It's nice and there's a bit of nectar in these frames, so maybe I'll just uh, I'll put them out and let the bees clean it up before I cut them down. What I think I'll do is uh, I'm going to cut these these frames down to mediums and use them for medium frames. Anyway, yeah, I might just leave this out and let the bees clean it up. So these frames have a little bit of a uh, little bit of honey and a little bit of nectar in them. But I don't have a hive for them yet, or I'm pr probably not going to put them in a hive. So what I did is I just put them in the top of this hive over the inner cover. I put the top on. So those bees, they, they have access to this, but it's not a part of the, of the colony. It's not a part of the cavity of the, co of the hive. So they'll just go up there. They won't see it as the hive. They won't start building comb or doing anything like with it. But they will go up there, spot the nectar and the honey that's up there, take it down, and put it into the hive. So, why not?